Hello again, I'm Walt Moore, also known as Dan Wilson. I uh, staged in my for years doing uh, radio and some television work, and also as a singer, songwriter, musician. And got me to shoot a little video, video here at home today. Uh, right now I'm over here in the garage and um, thought I'd share with you some of the uh, projects I work on in my spare time. And uh, of course, I have a lot of other interest in life uh, other than just playing music all the time. So uh, I run a little business here repairing lawn and garden equipment, uh, work on all kinds of stuff riding lawnmowers, chainsaws, wood splitters, string trimmers, just pretty much whatever comes up. So, uh, kind of a bad hair day. It's really blowing hard here in southeast Missouri. We get a lot of wind around here, so sorry about the bad, uh, bad hair look. Well, I'll work on that another day, I guess. Well, I thought I would share with you one of my current projects that I'm working on. It confuses some people who uh, know me through YouTube and Facebook and other places online. They think all I do is play music all the time, but uh, I do a lot of other stuff uh, in life. Uh, among other things, I am a semi-professional metal refinisher, believe it or not. So I'll give you a little look around the garage here and show you what I'm currently working on. Among other projects, one thing I'm working on currently is a 1996 model white brand riding lawnmower. This is one my father purchased quite a few years ago. It's been in the family for a long time now, and it's got quite a few years on it. As you can see, it's got a lot of rust area. Just a few days ago, I took the fenders off the back end of it here. I'm going to repaint those. Uh, this riding lawnmower is going through a complete restoration process. I've done a lot of work on the engine and uh, put some new belts on it not too long ago. This is a neat little battery compartment I built myself. The original one rusted out and actually broke in two. So here's what that looks like. Uh, what I did was I just took some ordinary flashing and I put two layers of it together and did all the folding and bending necessary to make it fit in there. And that's where the battery sits and that project worked out very, very well. Here's another very bad rust area right there. This is near the uh, one of the back tires. Up here around the front, there's still some rust spots here and there. Now I'll look at the front of the riding mower. Still got a really good engine on. That's a Briggs and Stratton. That's a 15 and a half horsepower engine, I think. I believe it's right. Well, it shows it right there on the top. Yeah, 15 and a half, yeah. It's been a really good one. I'm very fond of Briggs and Stratton engines. I've worked on hundreds of them over the years. I've done this type of uh, work for a lot of years now. As I said, I repair lawnmowers, uh, all sorts of outdoor equipment. As you can see, I've taken it's what I call the engine cowling, is basically the parts uh, that go around the engine. I took all those off there a while back, and they're in the process of being repainted. I got, I think, all but the hood done. I'll get back to that another day. So just another look around here inside of the engine. I repainted the muffler not too long ago, so it's looking a whole lot better. Also, just recently, I put an inner tube in that tire right there. It had some dry rotting problems, so in a case like that, as long as the tread's still pretty good on the tire, I'll go ahead and keep the tire and just put an inner tube in it. That's a real good way to save money. Those tires like that usually sell for like anywhere from $35 to $50 or $75 a piece. They tend to vary in price, but if they're still in pretty good shape with good tread and everything, you can get an inner tube for about $10 to $15 for a tire that size. So that's what I usually do. This tire started developing some dry rotting in the sidewall there. Originally it was a tubeless tire. I forgot to mention that. And what happens after so many years of use, they start to dry rot and you'll get some air leaks around there. And so a quick, well I say quick, <laughs> um, a somewhat quick and easy solution for that problem just put an inner tube in it. One thing that I had to learn the hard way when putting in putting a new tube in a tire is that it is possible to put the tube in incorrectly. A deal that happened to me several years ago I it was not on this riding lawnmower. I've worked on a bunch of these over the years. I mean hundreds of them. And it was a different one. I was putting a, a tube in one of the rear tires because, again, the same thing happened. The tube had, I mean, the tire had dry rotted. 
but was still in pretty good shape overall, so I was going to put a tube in there. I didn't know this at the time, but it is possible to put a tube in backwards, and if that happens, when you go to inflate the tube, it will literally suck the valve stem, if you know what I'm talking about. I'll just show you one. This is just in case you don't know these things. That little black thing sticking out there is the valve stem. That's where you put the air in the tire, okay? Most of us know this, but I've run into a couple people who don't even know that much, so that's what that looks like. What I was trying to explain earlier is if the tube goes in incorrectly, it will suck this valve stem all the way inside the rim. And if that happens, you can't... Well, I left one important thing out. Let me stop for a second. Inside this is called a valve core. That's what allows you to put air in the tire without the air coming back out. Okay, the valve core shuts off the airflow. Well, I started to say a minute ago, and this is a mistake that I made several years ago. I didn't quite know what I was doing. I put the tube in the tire incorrectly, and as I began to inflate it with the valve core in, it started to suck the valve stem inside the rim of the wheel. Now, if that had happened all the way, I would have had no way to deflate the tube to be able to take the tire back off in correct situation. So a very important thing to remember, <laughs> if you get into something like this, if you're not sure which way the tube goes in, then be sure and remove the valve core. Again, that's right inside here, inside the valve stem. Take the valve core out of it so that if it's... In, if the tube is in incorrectly and starts to draw the valve stem inside the wheel, all you got to do is take your air chuck back off of it and let it deflate, pull the tire back off, and turn the tube around the correct way. So just something to keep in mind if you're doing re tire repairs like that. Anyway, just a little home video here. I, I'm Trying to do more of this, I guess me acquaintances in other parts of the country, actually in other parts of the world, and about the only way we can communicate is through YouTube, sometimes through Facebook and other uh, online avenues. And so just for some of the people who have never met me in person but know me online, there are a lot of people that know me online, uh, as I said, through Facebook, through YouTube and other avenues. We've never met in person, but we communicate back and forth uh, through the internet. And they don't really know a whole lot about my home life or other things that I do. So I'm trying to do a little more of this as I have time and get in the mood to. Just to uh, kind of share what goes on. Some stuff that I work on behind the scenes. And I'm not always out playing music shows like I was in younger life. And so other things come up and other interests. As I was saying, I got into metal refinishing a long, long time ago as a teenager. I've repainted uh, cars, trucks, vans lawn and garden equipment, all kind of stuff. And it's quite a process to, to work through, but it, it's kind of enjoyable and I love the end result. I could take an older machine like this, I'm just showing you, and I will turn this into, I started to say brand new. I get on some people are saying brand new this, brand new that. It's either new or it's old, <laughs> or it's new or it's used. Why do they come up with this phrase brand new? I ask, what? is the difference between new and brand new. I don't know. But when I get done with this project, this riding lawnmower is going to look like it just came out of the factory or out of the out of the showroom. That's my whole point. So for those of you who think I do nothing but play music all the time <laughs> and uh, travel and do music concerts, uh, not much anymore. I work on stuff like this. Um, I try to um, be as helpful as I can with other folks who don't get into this type of work or maybe need to have some of it done and just don't know how to do it. Some time ago I started what I was calling the How to Do It video series on YouTube and I got a few of those videos out there already. It takes a long time to do all this stuff uh, to do the work that I'm doing and to do all the video production and all the editing. It just takes a long long time to get all this done. So. Uh, I'm going to be doing more of that. Uh, I mentioned in some other videos, I worked in construction for well over 30 years. I was a professional electrician for uh, at least 20 of those years. And I've done a lot of different stuff over the years. So I'm going to try to do more video work and hopefully help 
some of you uh, just get some pointers some ideas on how to do certain things that you're maybe not familiar with um, a lot of the reasons that I do stuff like this and share it on YouTube and other places is because if you can learn how to do some of stuff yourself you can save yourself a bunch of money uh, I've done my own mechanic work for years and years years since I was like 14 15 years old and I've saved myself literally thousands of dollars versus hiring a, another mechanic or somebody else to do all my stuff for me I just learned to do it myself and and I saved myself a bunch of money so if anything I come up with uh, helps you out be sure and uh, leave me a comment hopefully a good one give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to and I'll keep up with more how to do it ideas in the future before we go here I'm gonna swing the camera back around and we're still yeah, still rolling okay here are the fenders off the riding lawnmower that I took off just a couple days ago pretty simple job remo removing the fenders off the machine and you can see they have the un this is the underneath side of the fenders right here and it's just completely rust covered uh, yesterday I was stripping some of the old paint uh, most of the paint on here just peeled off it was just like falling off the machine one thing that frustrates me with the manufacturers I have found out that in most cases at the factory they do not use primer on their metal and that is a huge mistake and that's the main reason why sometime later the paint just starts peeling off the machine or off the metal so I'm in the process of redoing all of this I got a little more paint to take off here and there and it's gonna get a good sanding and then possibly by later today I'll be ready to shoot some primer on this and then after I get about two or three good coats of primer on that I'm gonna shoot some paint on that and turn that back into a new looking piece of metal right there let me just flip it over and uh, show you the top side of the fender so I can get them to sit up on the table here. There we go. You gonna stay for me? There you go. Okay. Here's what the top side of the fenders look like. And I primed these a while back. It's been a few weeks ago. And they're gonna get another shot of primer. But that's what they look like. These, of course, go on the back side of the riding lawnmower. And right now, that's just primer. When I get ready to do this, I'm going to paint these fenders a. Um, I forgot. Okay, the name of the paint I'm using is called Burgundy Gloss, and it's going to look great. It's actually um, an almost direct match for the original color that the riding lawnmower was painted at the factory. What I did is I took a little piece of the chip paint with me to the hardware store to pick out the paint, and I thought it was going to be a real long shot trying to find the right paint for this riding lawnmower because I want it looking just like it came out of the factory. Or as close as possible and I found this paint called burgundy gloss and that's what most of it's going to get repainted as or repainted with I should say so I got to get to it here and uh, start wrapping things up with the video so I can get back to work and and uh, try to get some more stuff done but uh, I'll, uh, I'll give you an update as I get farther along with this project and maybe not every day but uh, just uh, it's going to take a while to get this done. This project overall is going to take about probably another couple of weeks to complete entirely. So I'll give you some updates on the progress as I uh, get farther along with it. And just kind of show you how it's all coming together. Anyway, thanks for checking out my video. I hope this helps somehow. If you have a project similar to what I'm working on. If you have any questions or anything I could help you out with, leave them in the comments down below. Give it a thumbs up if you like it, subscribe to my channel, and I'll have some more videos coming up in the future. Again, this is Walt Moore, otherwise known as Dan Wilson. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.